Welcome, Kubis So, so for this specific video, we are recording it for the panel discussion that you're going to be having at SAPIC, the uh, logistics conference that's coming up quite soon. I want to quickly dig in a little bit and find out a little bit about you. So would you give me like a quick two minute origin story, basically, who are you, where do you come from and what makes you, you? Um, so yeah, thanks. Thanks very much. Uh, my name is Kubis So. Um, I'm really looking forward to this APEX conference in Cape Town in uh, the middle of June, where I'll be part of a panel specifically talking about artificial intelligence in the supply chain and how we can practically use that. Um, who I am, I've, um, I've been in the supply chain industry in South Africa for my entire career, a proud past president of APEX and I've always been involved in the organization. And it's great to, to be also um, involved in this theme around artificial intelligence, which is in some ways new to me, given that I've fulfilled a relatively new role in the last few years, but then also not new in that what we've always done in supply chains and logistics has always relied on, on some form of machines and computers to assist us. So something about me, um, I'm a graduate industrial engineer. Um, I've always worked in the logistics and supply chain industry, started my career um, in small consulting um, and then spent uh, a good part actually in the working for Cadbury, making chocolates and sweets. Um, and since then, I've essentially been involved in, in the services industry around technology and logistics. Um, founded Volition that was sold to Imperial in 2008, that's 15 years ago. And I've been with Imperial for the last 15 years. Um, you may see that my title now is that I, that I head up um, but I'm the, the technology business partner for um, Sub-Saharan Africa for DP World. And you may then not quite make the link that yes, DP World is a global multinational, major sponsor of golf and Formula One, but also acquired Imperial um, as we have known the business about a year ago in March last year. So I'm, I'm still in the same organization doing the same job that I've done for the last three or four years, and that's specifically to look after the technology and digital transformation of Imperial in Sub-Saharan Africa. That's perfect. And then maybe give a quick overview about Imperial and then DP World, like what's the mission and what, what do you guys do? Yeah, so Imperial as an organization is well known to all South Africans. It's a, it's a conglomerate that has existed for many, many decades. Um, people often think about it still as a car rental company. We haven't been that for a long time. But today, Imperial, that was still listed as Imperial till March last year, is a logistics business with a twist. It's a business that has lots of trucks, lots of warehouses, lots of people that deliver products, but also work across the supply chain with many other partners. And then the twist bit is that we have an extended value proposition that we actually provide market access. We actually take product right into any market across Africa, and specifically into difficult markets. And we do that through a distributor model where we take ownership of the product. So Imperial is a, a business that had a strategy that was referred to as the One Imperial Gateway to Africa, um, which is all about making sure that services and products are actually provided to the people of Africa. DP World acquired us because their, their vision and purpose is to be able to enable trade and not only as a gateway in and out of Africa, but globally. And DP World started off as a ports business, to be more specifically, it started off as the port of Jebel Ali in, in Dubai. And it grew into a global ports business that then evolved its vision and its impact to be reaching from the farm to the fork or from, as we call it in DP World, from the factory door to the customer, from the factory floor to the customer door. So it is an end-to-end -end logistics supply chain business. Um, it's a global business. Um, we have a very strong presence um, in, in many of the regions across the world. I now I'm part of our group technology structure that's actually headquartered out of India, with a strong presence in Europe and also through the acquisition of Syncrea. It's another business they acquired at the same time, a contract logistics business. So yeah, so we're the people that actually move and store most of the products that you buy in South Africa. Well, not most of the products, in some categories and some not, but certainly in uh, in two of the biggest retailers in South Africa, when you, when you touch the product, we've got it there. Brilliant. And then tell me in terms of 
AI and what you might have seen recently, are there any practical uses within the supply chain, within your environment that you've seen and how they might have affected how you guys do business? Yeah, I, AI, or then as we refer to it, insights from data is is a key driver of our business. It's a challenging journey. It's difficult. We are we traditionally a very decentralized business with with um, quite divergent systems, and and we've put a big effort into pulling this together through big data management infrastructure um, and using AI as part of that stack to be able to deliver value. The two examples that are the most relevant and both relevant for supply chain is that we've done extensive work in what we refer to as digital fleet management. And that's really about how do we how do we use the immense amount of data that resides around our fleet, our fleet being vehicles that are staffed by our drivers that are performing activities to move product from point A to B and all the way to Z. How do we use all that data, all the geospatial data, all the activity data, all the time and attendance data, um, all the vehicle performance data, and make of that something that helps us at the end of the day be more green and save money in terms of fuel consumption, be more effective in terms of the utilization of our vehicles and our labor, and then also to be more safe. So digital fleet management is a journey we've been on for some time. Um, it is very challenging because it is a complex world with lots of data and lots of opportunity. And as we'll speak to at the conference, it's tricky to find the right balance between the clever stuff and the practical real stuff, because the clever stuff is actually of very little value if you don't apply it in a way that will give you insights on which you could act. The second example is in our market access business, where we sell literally millions of products every day for many of our principals to their customers. So if you think about it, we think about us as a almost like a retail or a wholesale activity. We buy product, we keep it in stock, and we sell it on behalf of our principals to their customers. Now, knowing what was sold to whom, when, well, for what price, between different markets, you know, between different categories, is immense amount of data. And how we use that to develop our relationship with our principals, which are typically the, the world's biggest brand owners in pharmaceuticals or in healthcare, or in, in FMCG, um, that we help them understand what's actually happening with their products in different channels, in different markets, at different prices. And then obviously there's all the dreams around AI that you can combine that data with other data sources and be able to forecast better that if it's going to be sunshine, then people will buy more, more beer. Um, we're not there. We're trying to get the basics right of understanding what is actually happening and how could you learn from that. Um, and, and probably the most practical thing there from an AI point of view that I believe is possible is to find easier ways to manage master data. Because if you have many markets, many products, although they may be coming from the same company, whether it's a GSK or a Procter & Gamble or Unilever or Diageo, they call different things. And I think that AI is a very good or machine learning, probably in a better term, is a way to manage this master data or the insights from, from this, this wide population or this big data, essentially, to extract um, data easier than somebody sitting in Excel and cleaning, cleaning the, the product lists.